guys. Here we go. Hope you're enjoying your sunny afternoon. Don't mind me just working away here in P1 with the blinds closed. So I am not jealous of the kids playing outside. So we are getting into, as I mentioned, the final topic in module five. And I think you guys are really going to enjoy it because we are going to say so long temporarily to those word problems. And we're actually going to be checking out um, shapes and working with geometry. We're going to be talking about angles. We're going to be talking about properties of shapes. Um, and we are going to be classifying shapes. And it's going to be great fun. And uh, here we go. Thank you for joining our math videos. We've missed you so much. So excited to see that you are doing well. Um, and really excited that you are coming along to camp. I didn't know that hamsters were allowed at camp, but uh, clearly you've made other arrangements. So we will see you there, buddy. Um, cool. Well, that was exciting. Let's get into lesson 16, you guys. We are going to be exploring trapezoids. Uh, we are going to be checking out the characteristics of trapezoids. We are going to be um, defining trapezoids. And then we're going to do this cool hands-on activity um, where you're really going to understand the angles that make up a trapezoid. So we are going to be checking out a few different two-dimensional figures as we continue and wrap up module five. We're going to see trapezoids uh, today. We're going to look at parallelograms, rectangles, rhombuses, squares, and kites, and it's going to be great. Um, so lesson 16 covers, like I said, just trapezoids. And um, we are going to define trapezoids very, very specifically. This definition is really the college definition of trapezoids. Just know that there are slightly, there's a slight variety of the definition for tra trapezoids out there in the world, but this is a definition that we are going to use in Eureka because this is really the definition you will see in college. And Eureka is awesome because it's Common Core aligned and Common Core is all about preparing new kiddos for college. So yes, it's a college is a few years away yet, but you are going to tuck this definition in your pocket. You're going to come back to it in middle school, high school, and college, and um, you're ready for it in fifth grade because you guys are brilliant. Okay, so trapezoid, this is the definition we're using. Is a quadrilateral. Okay, got it, quadrilateral again, Mrs. Calamaris. I see the word quad, so, um, okay, quadrilateral, just a fancy word for a four-sided figure. Quadrilateral, quad, root word, four-sided figure. Okay, cool, I got that. So, okay, so Miss Calamaris, you're saying that trapezoid has to have four sides? Uh, yep, yeah, it has to be a quadrilateral. Lateral. Got it. Also, a trapezoid must have at least one pair of opposite sides that are parallel. Well, what in the world does that mean, lady? Um, we are going to play around with and explore and use some really cool symbols while we are in this geometry portion of Module 5. It's kind of shorthand uh, to define and describe what's going on in a few figures. Parallel, we can also replace with this sign because those two lines are parallel. If we're marking a trapezoid, so this is a trapezoid, it has one, two, three, four sides. One, actually I should do that in a different color. Um, we have this side and this side, so hot dog, there's a pair of sides that are parallel. They run parallel with one another. These little carrot uh, signs are shorthand, geometry shorthand for parallel. So in parallel, just in case you are uh, forgetting, parallel is if these lines ran, oh gosh, that is not a straight line, but if this line continued to run out into space infinitely, these lines would never intersect with each other. So those are parallel lines. These lines, however, on this part of the um, trapezoid, those would eventually intersect with each other if those lines ran off of the trapezoid and into space. So parallel, eh, 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 
not parallel, right? Because they would eventually intersect. Okay, so trapezoid, working definition, quadrilateral. Keep in mind, quadrilateral is just a fancy word for a four-sided figure. Uh, it also must have at least one pair of op opposite sides that are parallel. At least. At least. Cool? Let's go. Hey kiddos, this is going to be so much fun because we are actually going to be drawing uh, trapezoids. And we know that trapezoids are going to have four sides. And then we also know that trapezoids are going to have at least one pair of parallel lines. Um, within the trapezoids, we are going to follow some instructions as far as the angles go. Um, so let's take a look at the first one. So this trapezoid needs to be made up of no right angles. Right angles, again, are not again, but right angles, to refresh your memory, are 90 degrees. This angle right here is 90 degrees. So I cannot have any uh, right angles. So that is fun. We need to have things that are either larger or smaller than 90 degrees. So let's go ahead and make our two parallel lines. One, two parallel lines. And then let's go ahead and connect those lines and just pay very special attention that we are avoiding those perfect angles. These, again, are 90 degree angles. We do not want those in this trapezoid. So without a protractor, of course, it's very hard to tell exactly. Uh, but here are all of our angles. Again, we have four angles. They're all a little bit... We have this is larger than 90 degrees, this is larger than 90 degrees, and then this angle and this angle are a little bit smaller than 90 degrees. So we are good there. Let's look at the next one. We have this funny word here, only one obtuse angle. Obtuse can uh, be a, a word that we would use to describe someone that's really annoying. But in geometry, you can also maybe uh, connect the same characteristic. An obtuse angle is an angle that is larger than 90 degrees. Maybe it's obtuse. Maybe it's difficult to deal with. Maybe it's an annoying angle. It's not this lovely concise 90 degree angle. It's something that is larger than 90 degrees. So I need a trapezoid that has, of course, four sides that consists of at least one pair of parallel lines, but it only has one obtuse angle. So we are going to, I'm going to rely on a right angle because I can have a right angle, but we can only have one obtuse angle. Um, let's go ahead. I might use two 90 degree lines and then I'm sorry I might use two 90 degree angles and then is that going to be gosh this is fun. I love geometry. Okay so we're going to say this is 90 degrees. Sorry I should be drawing a little bit larger so I can label these. We'll say this is 90 degrees. And we're going to be more precise when we're using our protractors. We're going to say this is my obtuse angle. I'm not sure exactly what the measurements are. Maybe 110, 115. And then we're going to say this angle is, I love the, my favorite kind of angle. It's actually referred to as an acute angle. Isn't that sweet? It's an acute angle because it's less than 90 degrees. If we were to make this one a 90 degree angle, I'll do a dotted line. Or maybe I'll just do a full line. Do you guys see how that's a 90 degree angle? And this angle is smaller than 90 degrees? It's an acute angle because it's less than 90 degrees. Um, over here, this angle is it goes from here to here so it's actually larger if this angle were 90 degrees it would look more like this but it does not look like that it's larger than 90 degrees so it's obtuse meaning larger than 90 degrees oh this is so fun i love this okay cool so now the next one we need two obtuse angles so it's still going to be a trapezoid <clears throat> still going to consist of at least one pair of parallel lines but it needs to have two obtuse angles, and then it still needs to have four sides because 
it is a trapezoid. So we need two obtuse angles, meaning we need two kind of annoying angles. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and draw. It says draw a pair of parallel lines in each box. I guess it doesn't say first. Um, well, then use the parallel lines to draw a trapezoid with the following. You know what? That's not the way my brain thinks, Eureka. So I'm going to draw my angles first. These are not parallel lines, obviously. Um, I'm going to draw my obtuse angles first and then go from there. So I have one set of obtuse angles. And then I'm going to draw... Keep in mind, we know this is an obtuse angle because if I... So this is larger than 90 degrees. If it were, if it were 90 degrees, it would look more like this in the green. So that's about 90 degrees. About 90 degrees. You're, you're, you're about 90 degrees. It's much larger than that 90 degrees. It's that purple angle, the obtuse angle, which is larger than 90 degrees. Okay, so I have a, one obtuse angle there. And then I have one, I want my purple back. I have one obtuse angle over here, larger than 90 degrees. If it were 90 degrees, it, it would, the angle would look just about, it would come out just about there. So I have one, two obtuse angles. And the result is going to be quite a large <laughs> trapezoid because I need to continue my lines. Yeah, hopefully in a very straight um, fashion tomorrow when we're working with these we'll have rulers so these lines are going to be lovely and straight okay guys so I have two obtuse angles I have this obtuse angle and then I have this obtuse angle larger than 90 degrees and then the result here were acute angles I have one acute angle here and I have one acute angle here. Keep in mind, acute angles are cute because they're smaller than 90 degrees. Okay, cool. Let's look at this one. At least one right angle. Okay, cool. I can handle that. Um, at least one right angle. Well, I love that reasoning. So here's my at least one right angle. This is a right angle or this is 90 degrees. And then from here, I need four sides because I'm drawing a trapezoid. And I need to make sure that two of those sides, the opposite sides, are parallel. So how about I just try this? I'm going to run a parallel line <clears throat> over on this side. And then we're just going to close off that gorgeous trapezoid. Again, here we have two parallel lines. One, two. These little carrot marks mean that these two two opposite sides are parallel. Um, we can also mark parallel lines over here. We had two sets of parallel lines parallel lines in this trapezoid, which is totally acceptable because trapezoids have at least one pair of parallel lines. So that was fun. I liked that one. And then up here we had two, we had a pair of parallel lines, that one and that one. And then our first gorgeous trapezoid also had one pair of parallel lines. Okay, cool, guys. So this is exactly what we're going to do in class tomorrow. We are going to construct trapezoids. We are going to abide by the trapezoid rules. And we're really going to do an investigation of trapezoid angles. So it's going to be fun. Can't wait to see you guys uh, tomorrow. Bye-bye for now.